we have derived the navier stokes equation starting from the differential form of the linear momentum balance so now uh, it's time for us to look at uh, applications of the navier stokes equation okay and that's what uh, is highlighted here if you look at the words which are highlighted just linear momentum balance and we are going to look at the application of differential form of that that's why that is also highlighted and then the differential form what you derived is a navier stokes equation and that is highlighted we are going to look at application so that is highlighted and of course the applications of differential balance equations okay that's the connection between the highlighted words here okay now um, when we began and deriving the differential form of linear momentum balance we discussed the applications of that and uh, we discussed uh, very detailed applications okay i would say research level applications uh, both uh, which are uh, <coughs> old and then new okay very traditional applications and then even contemporary applications and uh, recent applications we discussed but and then we later on discuss this particular slide so the recall slide we said uh, though the applications are, uh, can be to any level of detail we are going to restrict to simple applications so this slide was discussed earlier so right time has now come to really uh, look at this application solve this applications okay so what are the applications we'll be looking at the first one is uh, application for uh, pressure drop measurement using u tube manometer second one you have a body of liquid translating let's say uh, water in a tanker uh, lorry and what is what is how does the surface look what is the pressure distribution and what is the pressure distribution in a converging nozzle okay. and then of course more importantly these two configurations flow between two parallel plates one in which one is fixed the top plate is moving other in which uh, the two plates are fixed but flows by uh, because of a pump okay so we have looked at these profiles several times earlier we have taken it as given to us and we, have, we always kept saying that towards end of fluid mechanics part we'll be deriving them and now as part of this applications we will derive the these velocity expressions and we will also plot these profiles both for both the cases okay, okay. so that gives an a rough idea of what are the applications which are in store for us okay. now how do we classify these applications okay. we are going to look at applications hierarchically okay. what does it mean we are going to start from simple applications and go to complex applications okay in fact we are going to start with the simplest application what could that be fluids at rest okay not alone fluids at rest but fluid moving as a uh, fluid moving in rigid body motion what does it mean if you have a uh, container and then fill with some fluid the entire fluid body moves okay that's rigid body motion okay. what are we interested in that pressure distribution okay so we will take up uh, first fluids at rest and in rigid body motion and look at the pressure distribution then slowly we evolve we now allow for the fluid to flow but now consider the case where the viscous forces are not significant okay those are called inviscid flows and where we discuss the bernoulli equation okay. and then once again we evolve further we allow for fluid to flow and also consider viscous forces they are called as viscous flows and that's where we discuss the flow between the parallel plates and what are we interested now in the velocity profile or the velocity distribution okay so we hierarchically go from the simplest simplest is just fluids at rest to flows with viscous effects okay okay so now let's start with the first level of applications namely fluids at rest and in rigid body motion okay so what is the outline fluids at rest first okay 
look at the hydrostatic pressure distribution, we will understand these terms as we go along and then fluids in rigid body motion where the whole fluid body is subjected to motion and look at pressure distribution. Okay. As we discuss, we will understand these uh, outline uh, much more clearly. Okay. So, let us start with uh, fluids at rest. Fluids at rest uh, have a tube or some container and you have a pool of liquid that is all is a fluids at rest. Okay. It could be gas, it could be liquid, we are going to see bo both of them. Okay. And uh, now, uh, we will have to recall back our discussion on uh, fluids at rest, uh, when we discussed, uh, first we discussed about the stress for solids and then we came to fluids back and discussed about total stress and we said total stress has two components, the hydrostatic uh, contribution and the viscous contribution. Okay. Now, we said fluid under rest has only hydrostatic contribution, when it moves there are additional contribution namely viscous stresses. Now, for the present case, the fluids that are, are at rest and so there are no additional contribution namely viscous stresses. So, that is why the first bullet says there are no viscous stresses, there are no viscous stresses both normal stresses and shear stresses. Okay. Now, what is the only stress present in a fluid at rest? It is only the normal stress which is the pressure which is the thermodynamic pressure and that, that is why it says pressure is the only of course, normal stress and it is a surface force. Okay. Pressure is the only surface force to be considered and that is a normal stress. Okay. Now, let us see how does the Navier-Stokes equation get simplified and for this condition. Okay. Now, we have discussed the physics of fluids at rest, it is in fact a recall, we have already discussed that. Now, we are going to simplify the Navier-Stokes equation for this particular condition. Okay. Now, let us write down the equation first, that is the left hand side of the linear momentum balance, the transient term, the convection term and then the body force and the surface forces due to pressure and viscous stresses. Now, When we derive the Navier-Stokes equation, we expressed these viscous stresses, normal and shear stresses in terms of velocity gradients using the Newton's law of viscosity and obtained this Navier-Stokes equation. The linear momentum balance substituting the Newton's law of viscosity for the viscous stresses, we obtained the Navier-Stokes equation. Okay. Now, the left hand side we have seen can be expressed from a material particle viewpoint. In fact, uh, when we discuss the linear momentum balance, we took the left hand side and expressed as the material derivative in and then when we discussed about the Navier-Stokes also, we quickly recalled that the left hand side can be written in terms of the substantial derivative and that is a form we have taken and uh, remember when we discuss applications almost all the times we will take this form of the Navier-Stokes equation. Though we have derived this form of the linear momentum balance and then from that we got this form of the Navier-Stokes equation, the more practical and the used form is this form which is from a material particle viewpoint. Why is it from material particle viewpoint? The left hand side is in terms of the substantial derivative. That is why we discuss substantial derivative in the beginning of the course itself. At that point, maybe the motivation would not have been very, very clear. We just said we are going to express acceleration of a fluid particle in terms of material derivative. Now, we are coming across situations where we are using them. Okay. Okay, the left hand side is in terms of uh, rho and then the substantial derivative velocity and then these represent the expanded form of the substantial derivative, the local component and then the convective component or local acceleration and convective acceleration right hand side of course, the same terms are present. Okay. Now, 
for fluids at rest V x, V y, V z are all 0, okay, there is no motion at all. So, what happens? Left hand side becomes 0, either you can two ways of uh, writing that V x is 0, so d V x by d t is 0 or if you substitute V x 0 here and of course, V y, V z, V x are, are all 0, so left hand side becomes 0. What about the right hand side? We have rho g x and that is written here and then we have the pressure gradient in the x direction of course, we are all writing for the uh, x moment x direction momentum equation or the navier stokes equation. So, I have the pressure gradient in the x direction and of course, these terms will not be present now because uh, the fluid is stationary and there are no viscous stresses at all. These term all these terms represent put together the viscous stresses and that is 0. So, now our equation becomes dou p by dou x is equal to rho g x. We have taken the pressure gradient to the left hand side the reason is that the variable of interest for a fluid under rest is that is a pressure. So, we express always the unknown in terms of the known that is why the pressure term or the pressure gradient term has been taken to the left and gravity on the right hand side. Okay. Similarly, we can derive for the y direction and for the z direction. So, now the navier stokes equation just look, look so formidable has become very simple for the case of fluids at rest. Okay. Now, to proceed further we will have to discuss this slide which we have discussed at least two times earlier which shows the different uh, possibilities of coordinate axis. This is our usual choice of coordinate axis x along horizontal, y along vertical and z perpendicular to the slide and we said that it is easy to reduce this to two dimensional case looking at the front view, but gravity now acts along y axis which is not so conventional always you talk about z as the vertical uh, coordinate. Okay. So, the choice now will be the third coordinate axis where y is along horizontal, z is along vertical, x perpendicular to the uh, slide. Now, advantage is that gravity acts along z direction which is our usual vertical coordinate okay. and uh, difficulty we said to reduce to 2D it is little difficult. Now, what is the view we are going to take? We are not going to take the top view, we are not going to take that, we are going to take this view. So, your z axis is going to be vertical that no doubt about it and x axis is going to be the horizontal axis. Okay. So, if you look from this direction then y is horizontal z is vertical. Now, we are going to look at this in this direction. So, x is going to be horizontal axis z is going to be vertical axis. Why is it required? In the previous slide we have written rho g x, rho g y, rho g z g x, g y, g z are components of the g vector. To proceed further we should know the orientation of the coordinate axis that is why we are discussing this choice of coordinate axis. Okay. So, now as I told you this is going to be our axis we are mu we are viewing from this direction okay, and look at this view and the axis shown in the next slide x is horizontal z is vertical and y perpendicular to the uh, slide. Okay. Okay. Now, having identified the coordinate axis let us see uh, how do we proceed. So, these are the equations from the um, previous to previous slide. Now, taking z as the vertical upward direction okay. and once you take that there is no component of gravity along x direction. So, g x is 0, g x is 0, there is no component of gravity along y direction. So, g y is 0, dou p by dou x is 0, dou p by dou y is 0. Now, what is the value of g z? The z axis is, is in this direction, gravity acts towards the negative z axis 
and so g z is equal to minus g when I write this g has a value of 9.81 magnitude of g okay, and that is what is shown here here g z is a z component of g vector when I write like this I have taken care of the minus sign so g is just 9.81 okay, plus 9.81 or just magnitude of g vector okay, because g acts towards the negative z axis. Okay. How do you physically interpret this? If you have a, a fluid pressure does not depend on x direction, y direction okay. and of course pressure does depend on the z direction. Okay. In fact, depends only on the z direction okay. and uh, how do you physically uh, state this what is the physical statement behind this expression okay for that if you take the z component of either linear momentum balance or the navier stokes equation the left hand side is zero right hand side we have rho gz minus dou p by dou z okay so let's keep this dou minus dou p by dou z on the right hand side take this rho gz to the left hand side substitute gz as minus g then what you get is minus dp by dz equal to rho g. Okay. Also like to mention we have written as dp by dz here and here also minus dp by dz. The reason is to begin with we said p can depend on x, y, z but now after taking z along uh, the vertical direction to be along z and x and y are in the horizontal plane and now p depends only on z so the partial derivative becomes a total derivative okay. okay now how do you interpret this equation or in terms of words how do you put what is minus dp by dz net pressure force per unit volume please recall back our discussion on physical significance of the linear momentum balance all the terms in the equation are per unit volume basis so right hand side we have minus dp by dz which represents net pressure force which is a surface force per unit volume and what is this rho g of course in the momentum balance it was on the right side again okay. and what is the significance of that it is gravitational force per unit volume okay. both are per unit volume so one is a surface force other is a body force okay. the surface force is um, the pressure force and the body force is the gravitational force. So, for a fluid under rest these two forces balance that, that is what is shown here the net pressure force per unit volume is equal to the gravitational force per unit volume that is a physical interpretation of this simple uh, equation. Okay. What is a working equation or how do you usually write what is shown here that is how you write you do not usually use this form as minus dp by dz equal to rho g the usual form which you come across will be dp by dz equal to minus rho g we wrote this form to give a physical interpretation because in our momentum balance we had minus dp by dz that is why we have written this equation as minus dp by dz is equal to rho g to have physical interpretation the working equation is dp by dz equal to minus rho g okay. what does it tell you pressure decreases as we move upward in a fluid at rest. If you are here and if you have let us say filled with liquid and if you are moving up the liquid there is a decrease in pressure dp by dz is negative remember g is just 9.81 just a positive number. So, this tells you that z is along the positive uh, z is upward. So, this tells you pressure decreases as we move upward in a fluid at rest. Okay. So, like to mention that this equation would be discussed almost in the second chapter of any fluid mechanics book. Okay. Now, where we have discussed is almost towards end of fluid mechanics. Okay. What is the reason? Your fluid mechanics book first talks about fundamentals the first chapter then slowly they evolve starting from fluids at rest. So, their first second chapter is fluids at rest where they consider gravitation body force, gravity as a body force and pressure as a surface force and arrive at this relationship. What we have done based on the scope of this course we started from the 
law of physics for the system expressed that for control volume using Reynolds transport theorem we got the integral balance and then we expressed and started from that got the differential balance while doing so we accounted for all the terms I would say we derived a all encompassing Navier-Stokes equation what do we mean by that we have the transient term the convection term we took all the forces into account the body force both the surface forces were taken into account pressure and viscous stresses and now we are simplifying without considering whatever terms which do not play a role now and we have arrived at the same equation the equation is same the path in which we have arrived at this equation is different straight away this equation is derived in second chapter of fluid mechanics book considering pressure as the only surface force they will not consider viscous forces because it is too early to discuss about viscous forces in the second chapter. So, only pressure is considered as the only surface force of course, gravity is a body force. Now, we have considered all the terms and then taken out the terms do not contribute and arrived at the same equation. So, this connection should be uh, clearly understood because we have a different approach and we should know we are arriving at the same equation. Uh, from a more general approach to a more specific case okay. and that is why I said we are going to start dis, uh, discussing the application starting from the simpler application not even simpler simplest application. Okay. So, in this form does not even look like Navier-Stokes. Okay.